the PTO Asian Open. We're not really sure what's going to happen in that race. So that's going to be, makes Singapore a fascinating prospect. The PTO Asian Open has potential to really take top billing. It's going to be interesting to see how that race plays out with a smaller field size. And I think we can also have one of the best fields ever assembled racing. We've not had a massive amount of racing at the 100k distance, but what we've had has given us a few inklers for what might come. Who's won those races? Can they bring that forward to August in the PTO Asian Open? Paula Finley, PTO champion. He has raced to perfection. Gustav Eden will win here in Canada. Ashley Gentle, first ever PTO Canadian Open. I beat the Rocks. For Max Newman. What an incredible performance. Abby Howe demolished the field in the event. At which point we're starting to see a little bit of dominance over that 100k distance. The big thing for me on this race is the heat and humidity. Different surfaces, different terrains. Some suit some athletes, some suit other athletes. It's going to be an interesting challenge. We could see that expectation of records realised. Yeah, that's a cockatoo. Oh. That, that's Max's cockatoo. <laughs> yeah, like I reckon it could, well, let's hope it doesn't outlive me, but they can live to like 110 years in captivity or something. I could die first before him, I reckon. It, um, he used to be like my best friend and then spent too long overseas and they came back and they just hated me, eh? <laughs> so Max Newman. <laughs> It's almost like a throwback Aussie in that way. Just turn up, do the race, see how he gets on, see how the, see how the cards lay. Max Newman, I mean, he's had a really good year. He came in ranked really high, but I think a lot of people have ridden long. Maybe because he just doesn't put himself out there as much as some of the others. He's not big on social media, he's not got his own YouTube channel, so there isn't just as much information about him. Just that he's oh, he only races well down in Australia. And he's come here and shown that he really can perform on the big day. Is it looking like a real threat at the moment? He is taking the lead. Yeah, that's a big move there from Max Newman. Max Newman looking fantastic as he twists and turns. He's coming down the chutes. He sees the finish line. He checks his shoulder as well. It's an outstanding run. I beat the rocks for Max Newman. What an incredible performance. He bags $100,000 and all the bragging rights here in Ibiza as well. Um, so where I come from is, it's just a beautiful little place um, outside of Brisbane that it's getting a bit bigger now, but it was when we first moved here, it was, it was very small. I guess my childhood um, was very much spent <laughs> pretty much entirely on this block. Um, we've got 40 acres out here. I was one of one of four kids, um, yeah, and we did a lot of, just spent a lot of time running around here. Ready? 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 Yeah. 
no like uh, sort of street street games or anything like that. It was very much just just us, um, which was good in a way. But I guess you also miss <laughs> miss having a neighbourhood. But um, yeah, it was just a lot of digging in mud, barefoot. You know, we're all, I've always been an outdoors person, um, but yeah, I rarely ever go into the city. Um, I think sort of the first time I went there was sort of back and forth was when I went to school, went to a, a school um, closer to the city for high school. Um, and that would take, you know, two hours to get there and two hours to get home. So it was, um, <laughs> I was very grateful my older brother got his, um, his license so he could uh, at least get home before five o'clock. So Mitch, my coach, he sort of came on in 2020 um, in during COVID there. He did a bit of cycling back in his day, but had uh, almost zero idea about how to coach triathlon. You actually already got a set, but if you do a sweet deal for a good man like you, they're women's, but I've been turning them into men's already. On the other side, he also has a job in sport, like a sort of adventure store. Um, which he's worked in since school, almost. Yeah. We could actually hook you up with one of these, eh? Well, oh, hook you up, you reckon? <laughs> yeah, I work at Wildfire Sports and Trek, um, just a local family-owned business in Brisbane. Yeah, hiking packs, uh, shoes, lots of triathlon-related stuff, um, sleeping bags, sleeping mats, anything to do with sport and the outdoors, really. Um, so it's been pretty good. When you're going out the mountains and stuff out west, get wet. Yeah, dry times, dry fast, you can feel. Yes, you know, just a bit of fun. Really. Do you have any poker gear? We actually do have poker gear, right now. We just got it. No, no, I haven't. I've never coached before. Um, this will be my first uh, athlete and kind of took over the reins when Max uh, left his last coach. It was kind of trial and error at the start. We kind of learned from each other and it's been, yeah, a bit of a whirlwind for the last three years. I'm getting into trial, right? People ask, like, when I ask, like, what do you sell? And I'm like, pretty much everything, eh? Nothing about it. I don't think he's going to be there too much longer, but he really does love it there. So, um, yeah, we'll see what he wants to do with uh, with coaching. But um, yeah, that's Mitchell. Know what he is at that point? So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, All right. Yeah, Maxi, growing up. I mean, we got on really well. I love Max. I uh, wouldn't choose any other brother. I was very great for my older brother. I just love everything about him. We play in the yard constantly as children. I used to love riding around here, so yeah, I just slowly started doing a few uh, inter-school triathlons and, and I guess it just sort of progressed. I just love sport, I guess. Um, I've always loved doing something. We grew up doing sport. Me and Maxie did Wheat Bix Tri, I think, when we were probably four years old. Well, Wheat Bix, I don't know if you know Wheat Bix, it's like Vitabrit Vita sort of thing as a massive cereal brand. They used to really pump a lot of money into, into grassroots triathlon. Um, you used to get thousands of kids out there. I feel like that was what really got a lot of people into the sport my age. It's exciting to see Maxi do so well as one of the honest, hardworking people um, in a sport that is filled with people that kind of forget why we do it in the first place. Triathlon is um, quite a unique sport and yeah, I just love everything about it. I guess I'm not really doing it for, for anyone anymore, it's just for you know my family and my and my small group of sponsors that, that get around me. And now I'm you know my brother's my coach, and my family's involved. It's a much more personal sort of thing we got going and I think that's really, really quite motivating to be honest because you're doing it for the people that actually matter, you know? What we do. Oh, I like following you. Yeah. You're a superstar. Oh, yeah. I heard about you yesterday. <laughs> Who from? Your brother. Uh, Max always struggled to kind of fit the exact vibe of what he was looking for in coaching, but we kind of came in as someone who's grown up alongside him. Um, I kind of get Max and I obviously respect him pretty much more than anyone else in the world and we kind of found a coaching groove that, that works very different to what national sporting bodies do. And it literally took us, you know, three years to, to really come up with, with something that, 
that work for me. You know, we've come up, we've been quite consistent the last two years, and I think that I think we found you know what work what works for me. So, um, yeah, he 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 absolutely loves the sport now, and he he literally follows everything. He's absolutely obsessed. Yeah, so the most important aspect um, in terms of performance for me personally is is definitely uh, hard and grit. I don't think many people would, you know, because you're racing, you're racing for, you know, yourself, your country, um, that sort of stuff. You're not racing for, you know, a heart rate monitor and a, <laughs> and a, and a, you know, a, a bloody lactate monitor. So it's been very hard to say that you can put your racing down to, you know, the science side of it. Yeah, the no bullshit science has got a bit of a run. I got a fair few messages and um, texts about that one. The no bullshit aspect, if I told Max to go and do a track set and do a lactate test every 400 metres, he'd probably disown me as a brother and uh, he'd definitely leave the sport. And I think our part is about being smart, consistent, but having fun. And that's obviously, you know, not getting obsessed with the numbers, not getting obsessed with all that sort of stuff. And we've just never brought in any sort of, um, you know, lactate testers, um, none of that sort of equipment. It's just as simple as it gets. Um, and it's what, you know, athletes have been doing for like the last 30 years. So it's, um, you know, people, people can still uh, get results without all this, um, this science stuff. Lucky in Ibiza, um, no, nah, I don't think so. We literally went over there for um, one purpose, and that was to, you know, podium. We actually had two goals of the year, and one of them was to win a PTO race. We did target the Asian Open, but we came, <laughs> it came early in Ibiza, so, yeah, we, we couldn't have asked for a better day. I think we ticked all the boxes. I knew exactly what I had to do. You had to get Christian a gap behind you. So that happened and yeah, it was just down to the run and, um, but yeah, no one's, no one's unbeatable. No, I don't think Christian and Gustav saw me as a threat. Um, I think they probably just had me on the, on the radar maybe slightly. I don't think they really saw me as someone to, you know, take the win. Going into the next race, yeah, you'd definitely uh, be in their pre-race plans, I think, yeah. If you, if you don't, you'd be pretty stupid, I think. The Norwegians are there. Gustav Eden and Christian Blumenfeld. Can they be beaten? Both of them together. Max Newman, is he better than Norwegians? Australia was always at the top of their game. I think we've just had, you know, a couple of rougher years. Both Norwegians, that's literally what, what you do the sport for. Of course, everyone says they can be beaten but do they really, truly believe it inside? It could be a Titanic showdown. Yeah, it's definitely uh, on the comeback with me and Ash in the, in the 100K. Yeah, the, the women's race is going to be super interesting. I mean, I, I can't really think too far past Ashley Gentle. She's relaxed. She's focused right now. And since she stepped up, she's been, it's like a breath of fresh air, I guess. I feel like that 100K is very much like her speciality now. 
here for Ashley Gentle. She won all of the races that she entered in 2022, the, certainly the PTO ones. When I was there for the US Open when she just powered through. And here comes Ashley Gentle. She is moving through this field. Wow, yeah. look at this. We have a pack of three and there's the pass. Ashley Gentle has passed Lucy Charles Barkley. Ashley giving absolutely everything she's got left to get through this final three kilometers now. She's just come into shot. She can see Taylor Nib rounding that corner in front of her. And I don't think it would be premature to say that right now the smart person's money is on Ashley Gentle to take the win. That number one lead spot in her sights right now. We're going to see the pass any second now, aren't we? She's gone. Seven. She's through. She's passed at nearly seven minutes she's taken out of Taylor Nib. Unbelievable. Run. She is approaching the tape. There's the smile. Now she's taking it all in. What a moment. Ashley Gentle has done it again. She was just destroying fields, running through them. Over that distance is probably the premier runner in the sport but then she probably didn't get what she was looking for in the PTO European Open in Ibiza. It is second place for Ashley Gentle. I think she will be a little disappointed with that. She's just so resilient, uh, such a great athlete, and obviously she'll be looking to fend off the charge of Annie Howe at the Asian Open in Singapore. You know, bring a towel for that, because that's going to be warm and sticky. So yeah, opening up new challenges for these top athletes. With Ashley Gentle, who was almost unbeatable at 100K, distance last year, whose run legs phenomenal, the best in the sport right now. But then Annie Howe comes and takes down her race winning form in Ibiza. And now she's had the odd defeat. She's got a point to prove. I think that from what I've seen in the middle distance racing, there's definitely less room for error across swim, bike or run. Um, in Ibiza, I had a, you know, a not so good swim. You know, swimming was always my weakness in short course. Um, yeah, you can't really be behind too much in the water. You can't really have a huge weakness on the swim. I've had a realistic look at where I'm at, where I need to improve. And I think that that's, you know, given me a lot of motivation in training and it's helped me, yeah, really want to pursue this middle distance game for a long time. I don't really feel like I've put a result together this year yet that's really shown exactly what I'm capable of. So yeah, coming to Andorra to train, I knew that I was coming up to altitude, I'm going to get you know, a, an extra kick out of that. You know, that's when you can really kind of take your fitness to the next level. She's not the fastest swimmer in the sport. There's always, there's always a chance to improve. And if she does that, she has that fear factor. However, she probably needs to have a bit of the fire burning to be able to turn up on the start line at the PTO Asian Open, going head to head with some of the greatest ever triathletes we've ever seen competing against each other. There's also one woman racing. Vashti Gentle should be worried about. Annie Haug. In many ways, Anne Haug is still getting better. And she's long been one of the best runners in triathlon. She just doesn't seem to be slowing down. She still seems to be running faster and faster and faster. Her runs have been devastating this year. Annie Haug has run herself into third place. Annie Haug already into second position. They haven't been running for that long. <laughs> yeah, I think she is one of the most feared runners out in the women's field. There she goes, and she does search. But Germany's Annie Haug marches forward into the lead. 
Danny Haug has run through to win the PTO European Tour race here in Ibiza. What a run. When I go all in, I go all in. And the sheer exhilaration of giving 100%. actually realizing that you're the, the best. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a war of attrition, I think. Survive or die. I know Christian loves to hurt himself. And that works for me. Yeah, he's definitely definitely beatable. I guess my eyes are pretty firmly fixed on the Asian Open. Not you're not racing, you know, like <laughs> five other guys, you're literally racing, you know, the, the 20 best athletes in the world. The heat will play a, a huge factor in this race. I think I still need to prove myself. Anytime there's extreme weather versus conditions that make the day harder, I seem to shine. There's a lot of strong competition here. I've done my homework, so uh, I feel good. The energy is different just because it feels like a, a championship every time we do race. No one should be able to stop me. Quite ambitious. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win what I set out to do. There is no limit. Limits are just in your head. I need to win this race so I can prove them wrong. Yeah, I've definitely got my eyes on the top spot. There's, there's so many names that we could throw into the mix. And I think in that sense, it's a monster. Show raises, it's short, it's explosive, it's fucking raising.